So it looks like we got a few more minutes here before the panel officially starts. So I'm just going to sit here silently for three minutes. <laughs> So is, uh, is everyone having a good time here? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Are, are, you, are you wearing that Joker costume again? Uh, you said you couldn't see yesterday. Why would you put yourself through two days of that? I tell you, the dedication. It's a good costume. It's very, uh, it's very specific Joker. I would say not a very popular one from the uh, pantheon of uh, Jokers that you could pick. Is that uh, it's a cartoon, Beware the Batman? No, no, it's the, it's, it's just the Batman? It's the Jeff Matsuda one, I know that. I can't remember the titles. My favorite one was uh, Batman Brave and the Bold. I don't know why they stopped making that one, it was clearly the best Batman cartoon. I think people are gonna hit me now. I like Batman the Animated Series, it's good. Good. Very good. How's your family? It's awesome. Yeah? Did he not want to go? Stayed all night at a friend's house. Yeah, how old's that kid? 16. Looking forward to that? Crap. I was leaving to uh, go to a meeting one morning. My son's seven. And, uh, and every, you know, he's young. So I'm like, Every time I leave the house, oh, I love you, man. Usually, hey, I love you too, Dad. A couple months ago, love you, son. Whatever. <laughs> it's like, all right. Pretty soon he'll be wanting to stay over at a friend's house and not want to go to a comic book convention the next day. Oh, that's 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 awful. You should buy yourself a bunch of awesome stuff that you know he likes. You'd be like, eh, mine. Whatever. <laughs> But that would be like cars and stuff now, right? Like there's nothing here that he wants. Oh God, I'm gonna start crying. All right. I'm just gonna start, I guess. Uh, and then I'm gonna sadly reveal that I actually started five minutes ago and that's really all this panel's gonna be. Uh, so, uh, so uh, you know, we're all here, we're having fun. Uh, I don't really prepare for these, so I'm not gonna like do a thing where I talk about stuff. Uh, I assume you guys watch The Walking Dead. Um, sometimes I don't even know. Uh, but uh, uh, do be mindful of, uh, I've been in panels before where people have like spoiled the ending of Breaking Bad and stuff like that, and you know, it always uh, doesn't go over well. So, uh, you know, just do a little like preamble if you're going to talk about, uh, you know, when Glenn died or something like that. You don't want to hear that. You may not have read issue 100 yet. So, uh, Don't be that guy. Uh, sorry to anyone who hasn't read issue 100. Uh, but, uh, uh, so yeah, do a little like, oh, that thing, uh, do, you know, so people can plug their ears or not pay attention or whatever uh, when you ask questions. And then that's a, a long way of me saying, I'm just going to answer questions. So uh, uh, I don't know if there is uh, another mic that you can go to so people can hear. Is this, uh, is this thing? Let's see. Hello? That's not good. So if you guys want to, uh, why don't we line up somewhere? We want to line up somewhere. Let's, uh, we're going to line up over here. Is that a good spot? You want to just go walking around? All right. Let's help these people be lazy. So uh, this guy's gonna run around the room the entire time. So just raise your hand. This lady got up. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Judy, and I don't care what your names are. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember. I'm just being honest. So. Um, well, it makes a reference. So. Um, that's good. On Michonne's sword, there's a Trinity symbol on it. Is there like a reason for that? Yeah, but I don't know it. Um, I will say that there's uh, uh, the white bands that are on the on the sword that go halfway down the blade. 
uh, apparently, uh, uh, for every battle that you won, you would get one of those in uh, Japanese tradition. And so if you look at traditional katanas, like they'll have like four of them or six of them, and the sword designer was like, eh, I'm going to give Michonne half of the sword for these things. So uh, the idea is that her sword came from some great general in Japan or something. Uh, the little uh, trinity thing, um, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Next time that question is asked, I'm going to have a fake answer for that. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. This is a two-part question. Oh, do, you, boy. do you have any control of the show and who dies in the show? Uh, if you're an actor, no. <laughs> uh, if you're not an actor in the show, yeah, I kind of do. Okay, so why did you agree to let Andrew be killed? Because I can't stand Andrew as a character despite what you see in the comic. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot that came out of that. I think it, it, it benefited Michonne's character a little bit. It, it benefited Rick's character. Uh, and, it, and it really kind of cemented, uh, you know, the, the governor didn't have the moment where he cut off Rick's hand, and there were different things that we didn't end up doing. And so we really needed that, uh, you know, like, vile governor moment. And, uh, you know, the show's not the comic. So, uh, you know, while, you know, Andrea lives on in the comic, at least until next issue, uh, yeah. <laughs> Those jokes are always big. Uh, uh, you know, the comic is the comic and the show is the show. So I think, uh, you know, embrace those differences and, you know, hopefully be along for the ride. I, I know that a lot of people uh, miss that character, and uh, I certainly miss that character. I love Lloyd Holden. She's a fantastic actress. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're telling a story and we're doing a thing. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. I'm sorry. If you pick all the close people, I'm going to start to notice. Mine's kind of a two-part question, too, uh, because I'm trying to figure out how long has passed on the show. Is it about a year and a half, give or take? Uh, Something like that. I mean, it's, it's longer on the show. I know there's been, uh, there was a winter between seasons uh, two and three, and then there was a winter between seasons three and four, so I think we're getting close to the two-year mark. Okay, my question is, when does uh, time uh, factor in to the horns as when their muscles have decayed to a certain point where they are? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people ask about, like, oh, you know, a, a dead body decays and, and they, you know, the zombie thing would be gone and they wouldn't be a threat and stuff. And, and uh, uh, you know, sure, scientifically, I guess. But uh, uh, one, I think that new zombies are being created. So, like, a lot of the zombies that you're seeing, like, Maybe they were, you know, pockets of people that were killed, you know, six months ago or whatever. But on top of that, uh, uh, I have to believe that the thing that is making them get up and walk around is also keeping their uh, bodies from decaying at a more rapid rate. So while they do look pretty uh, torn up and, and rotted and stuff, I think that there's, you know, some kind of uh, magical whatever element that's holding them together that's uh, keeping them. Uh, I just, I'm just gonna say it's nanites. That sounds fun, right? <laughs> nanites hold them together. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, it doesn't hurt, but uh, uh, I don't know. I came up with the idea because I, I love zombie movies and I hate the way they end. Uh, and I've said this in interviews, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. But uh, you know, I just uh, you know, most zombie movies, they uh, you know, a bunch of characters doing something interesting, and then they all die, or all of them but two die, and then those two do some kind of form of riding off into the sunset, never to be seen again. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to see where those people go and see what they do next. And so uh, my desire as a fan to see that led to me, uh, you know, deciding to do The Walking Dead as a comic. And then, uh, uh, you know, the thing that, I mean, Honestly, the thing that keeps me going is I only ever wanted to do comics and the only thing I ever wanted to do in comics was to have a story that I could tell for many, many, many years uh, unencumbered and, you know, without any kind of interference. Like, I, I grew up reading, you know, Savage Dragon and, you know, a lot of these other comics uh, that, that, you know, Cerebus that just go. And uh, it was the thing as a writer that I always wanted to do. And so... Uh, the show and the success and all that other stuff, like, for the most part, I'm like, yeah, that's nice, but I just had 120. Like, that's crazy. And that's the thing that, you know, 
really gets me excited. I mean, once The Walking Dead hit like issue 30, and I was like, whoa, this is going to go for a while. Like my brain basically exploded with like crazy ideas and crazy directions to go in, and I've got a very long roadmap for the series, and I couldn't be happier that. You know, people support the book and, you know, really seem to like where it's going and, and uh, you know, seem to be in for the long haul. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a dream come true for me. So uh, that's the thing that keeps me, uh, you know, up late at night, uh, making sure Charlie Adler has pages to draw because uh, I love telling this story and I hope to do it for a good long time. Also the money. <laughs> so, uh, another? Hello. Howdy. Uh, yeah, tons of stuff, but uh, the things that I dislike about the show are the dumb things that, like, um, I don't know, I talked about this a little bit in a panel yesterday, there's, uh, like, you hear about, like, Stanley Kubrick, and he's like, oh, you know, he, he would turn the soup cans to a certain angle and make sure that the shot caught the thing, and yada, 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 and uh, that's the kind of stuff that I, that I, to a certain extent, that's kind of stuff that Charlie Adler and I get to do in the comic, you know, like, we completely control environments, and that's, you know, a lot of fun, you do a lot of specific stuff. And because of the nature of how television is done, uh, you know, you can't do that. You know, it's just not realistic to do that. And uh, there's so many people, you know, working on the show and, and creating the show that, you know, the director wants the soup can't turn this way, and then I'm sitting in the back going, oh, it'd be cool this way, but I just don't see anything. So, like, there's little stuff, you know, like, oh, I wish that sword had moved this way, or I wish this thing had gone that way, and, you know, it, drives me crazy a little bit, but uh, the overall product I couldn't be more proud of. I love the way it comes together, and the people in Georgia are basically killing themselves making this show. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I sit in California at a keyboard, you know, and they're outside lifting heavy things. It's crazy. So, like, uh, you know, people are really devoted to the show, and they put a lot of work into it, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing seeing it come together. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you for the photograph this morning breakfast. That was, that was a little awesome. uncalled for, but I did it anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, but keeping on the track of the show is the show. Are you um, reading? Are you reading I, off a thing? Well, I had a great idea. Someone all right, all right. I didn't want to miss up the question. So what was the debate like as far as determining the fate of baby Judith? Because like, you kind of left it open-ended. Uh -huh. I didn't want to spoil for those who don't read the comic as far as for fate of the comic. So how did that happen? How the creative process of yeah. Is she alive? Is she dead? How much do you love people? I see that you're trying to trick me right now. <laughs> because you're asking me uh, what the debate was in, de in deciding the outcome of uh, Baby Judith on the TV show. Uh, and the outcome is unrevealed yeah. as of yet. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, check and mate? I don't know. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know, there was, there was a, there was a bloody uh, car seat there. I don't know. Maybe she's dead, maybe she's not. We'll have to see. Maybe somebody rescued her and they had like a nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh my god! I'm ruining this car seat. I really needed to take this with me, but okay, never mind. I hope Rick doesn't see this. He's gonna think something terrible happened. <laughs> Not what happened. We'll find out uh, February 9th. And then next year, if I'm here, you can ask me the same question. I appreciate the applause. Uh, yeah, next question. All right, Joker, let's do this. Oh, the mic is just going in the mic. <laughs> Mine is actually unrelated to the TV show. This is more around your... I just don't approve of this Joker voice, I gotta say. <laughs> Mark Hamill is far better. Like this. Uh, before you started publishing all of your books and when you wrote down your ideas, uh, were you ever concerned about copyrights, having somebody run off with your, your stuff? You know, you take it to an editor, they say, oh, this is great, I'm going to give it to this producer. How did, how did you... I think uh, uh, that, that happens, I guess. Uh, but I, I, I think that it uh, is something that people who aren't, like, doing things yet, or who aren't in the creative community, like, worry about more than they should. Um, you know, by publishing things, you technically get the copyright. I don't know what the rules are and whatever. But uh, this whole, like, uh, uh, you know, so-and-so took my idea, and I was going to do this, and then they were going to do this. Like, you have to understand that, you know, there isn't, like, a, a hive mind that we all tap into. But, like, if you think about the 400 million people that watched the finale of Breaking Bad, 
and how many of those people are somewhat creative and how many of those people were like, oh, it'd be cool if a ninja had fought Walter White instead and they come up with a book about ninjas fighting a Walter White-like character. Uh, you know, that's, that's like in the common uh, zeitgeist and it's something that everybody's paying attention to. So that's going to lead to people coming up with, you know, different ideas. When, you know, when a movie like Tron Legacy comes out and all of a sudden you see like all these different designs coming out where people have like lighted piping on them, you know, like somebody didn't steal from somebody else's idea, you were all watching Tron and we're like, that looks cool as hell. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's, just, it's so much easier for a creative person to come up with something like in their head, like, ah, I'm just gonna make up a dude that does a thing, he shoots potatoes out of his nose, I don't know, that looks cool. Uh, it, it's easier to do that than it is to like look at something and, you know, steal it. So, uh, uh, plus you usually get caught when you do that, so it's not really a, a, a thing that you should do. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know, copyright your stuff. I think I lost the entire audience on that one. <laughs> Thank you. First, first of all, thank you so much for coming out to visit us. That's so awesome. Wasn't uh, I got a, I got a, a plane part. took me here. <laughs> <laughs> I got a two part. Uh, first, you had talked about your roadmap for for the storyline um, between the novel novels like Road to Woodbury, the the television show, and the comic book. How much do you keep control over that? I mean, this, does it is it fluid? Um, and then the second part, because you're working on so many things, is there something else that we can look forward to from Robert Griffin? Sure. I've got a really awesome map coming later today. Uh, no, um, so keeping control of the continuity and stuff, like the, the novel series takes place, you know, overlapping with things that happen in the, com in, in the comics. So, you know, I, I am, you know, a co-writer on those novels. I'm not a novelist, and I don't really, uh, desire writing in prose form because I enjoy writing comics and so you know I basically uh, you know map out those stories and write the twists and turns and you know turn that into like some kind of nonsense document that uh, that Jay Bonnet Singer then uh, uh, proses up as I like to say uh, so like all the like plot twists and developments and the way the characters are and all those things in those novels are things that I wrote but all of the uh, language that I don't have that is in there. Like I'm reading those things and I'm like, ah, I don't use that word. I'm gonna have to look up what that word means. Uh, that's Jay Bonnet saying. Uh, and then, you know, the Telltale game is also in continuity with the novels and the uh, comics, but I don't write video games. Like if I were to write that video game, it would probably be terrible. You know, like, so you have to know your limitations. Uh, and so like I would have meetings with them and I would say, hey, you know, make people cry and it's all about the emotion and it's really just a soap opera. Uh, all the things that Walking Dead gets criticized for sometimes, and I'm like, yeah? What are you talking about? That's, that's what I'm trying to do. But anyway, um, you know, that's uh, all the guys in the audience are like, Hi, I'm watching a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, and zombies eat people every now and then, it's cool. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of let them run with it, and I just make sure that it's in the you know same universe and that it like, fits and stuff. And it's with different characters anyway, so it's not really overlapping or messing with... Uh, with the comic, and then when it comes to the show, I kind of look at that like the Wild West, because it's like a different universe, it's like an alternate dimension, you know, because I'm a comic fan, so that's kind of how I think of it. Uh, and, I, and I like the idea of like, oh, I'm gonna go into that alternate dimension where Rick still has a hand, totally neat. Uh, and, I, and I love those changes, and so that's why sometimes I'm pushing for some of those things that the comic fans are like, no, I wanted to see this thing from a comic, and I'm like, yeah, but it's in the comic, you don't need to, like, anyway. So, uh, so yeah, and then I've completely forgotten your second question, which is the danger of two-part questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's an important one. I have a new book called Outcast uh, that I'm doing with a guy named uh, Paul Azaceta that is uh, debuting in June, and it's an uh, exorcism uh, story that uh, hopefully will be really cool. And I'm excited about it because it's the uh, first time I've done a uh, horror comic uh, since The Walking Dead. So it's my second horror thing ever, and it's going to be completely different than The Walking Dead, except for anyone who likes The Walking Dead will love it, so you should all go out and buy it. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be cool. Hello. Yeah, that mic is very fickle. Yeah. Um, I love this show, but I have just one question. I love this show, but is my favorite way to start a question. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, um, I just have one question. Why do the characters suck so bad at shooting? 
A lot, of, a lot of guns in Arizona, huh? <laughs> Show of hands, how many of you have guns on you right now? I'm kidding. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna stop answering questions so flippantly. <laughs> An angel insult someone's Joker costume and they're gonna kill me. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna pass on that answer. <laughs> zombies coming at them, you know? It's hard. And these people are not trained experts, and also those are fake guns, and fake guns are fake. <laughs> so I don't know. I do sometimes read the online stuff where they're like, I heard a shell drop off the ground, but it was clearly a revolver before the person fired it, so I would have ejected a shell, and I'm like, I don't know, is that how guns work? I, I mean, I'm clearly not in charge of that part of the show, but, uh, but yeah. All right, go to the next. Go to the next question before someone shoots me. <laughs> hey, you gotta like, you gotta put it under your nose, and I don't know how it works. So, how many uh, like zombie extras do you think you have in, like a season? A season? Well, I mean, uh, because what Greg Nicotero and the team at KMB do is so. Um, so like all encompassing when it comes to these people, they will oftentimes like the hero zombies that you see in the show will be people that have been zombies before. And so they'll end up with like a core group of like 15 or 20 people that they'll come in and do like the, the big scenes. So like this zombie is actually the same person that was this zombie and I wish I remembered so that I could be like, oh, the RV zombie is actually the same zombie here, but I don't, I just don't remember. Um, and so a lot of the big important ones that you see close up are, uh, are like the same people that they get to know and they like hang out and stuff and, uh, and that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't remember any of their names. I'm a jerk, but, uh, but they're there all the time. Uh, and then there are like, you know, there are some scenes where we have like two or three or 500 people uh, that all get made up, but you know, there's like varying degrees of makeup. Like by the time you get to the people that are standing in the background, it's just a guy wearing like a red hat with like a powder, like black powder like thrown in his face and that's all you get. Uh, but. Uh, not true. Uh, they're wearing nothing. But uh, but anyway, so it's a lot. I don't know. In a, in a given season, I don't know. Maybe maybe 500 or, or so, because we do reuse people. Uh, the second question was, how do you become like, one of those zombies on the show? How do you become one of those zombies on the show? Yeah, uh, I believe that technically, because of the way uh, contracts and stuff work, you might have to be a resident of Georgia. So uh, so that's a thing. Um, and uh, yeah, but there's like a, I don't know, there's, there, there's like an online thing somewhere. I know in the first season there was like an email address that you would email if you wanted to be a zombie. I don't know if that still works, uh, but uh, I'll tell you right now, you don't want to do it. It's awful. It gets hot. They're, they, when they were filming the, uh, the, the highway scene with the, uh, the walkers that come through and the traffic jam at the beginning of season two, uh, there were like dead zombies that had like been killed in the scene and they had to like lay on the road and uh, They would call lunch and they'd be like all right time to get up and their makeup had melted onto the road And so they're like ah! <laughs> you know, So that happens uh, I'm gonna tell you a story. So Charlie Adlard, fantastic artist of The Walking Dead uh, Comes for the very filming the filming of the pilot the very first episode and he says uh, he says wait what? Robert, you're, you're not going to be a zombie? And I'm like, nope, not going to do it. And, uh, and he's like, you're crazy. They're filming this pilot? Like, we got to be zombies in this. And I'm like, you can do it. You can do it. I'm not doing it. And uh, I have a whole thing about cameos and seeing myself on a, on a TV show that ruined it for me. But also, like, it's hot. It's uncomfortable. And I don't, you know, don't want to do it. And so uh, he's like, well, I'm going to do it. And so he waits. <laughs> he waits at the trailer for like two or three hours, gets made up, comes down, films a films for like 15 minutes, which by the way means that he's in like one of 16 options for like one four second scene. So he's got like a one in 400 chance of showing up on the show. And I don't think he's in the pilot at all. Uh, and, he's, and he's like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna hang out over here with you. And then the next day he shows up and it was a two day scene. So he was supposed to be made up as the same zombie the next day. He's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> So there's a there's a photo online of him in like makeup like acting like he's a zombie 
uh, uh, trying to bite me. And that's the only thing that uh, that got out from him uh, uh, being made up and, uh, and hanging out for like nine hours in zombie makeup. It's no fun. In the, in the show, when can we expect to see it move beyond just Georgia? Uh, well, that would be a spoiler, but uh, I will say that they, they, they clearly leave Georgia at some point in the uh, in the comic. Unfortunately, they never go to Arizona, but <laughs> comics still going, you never know. I'm just trying not to get shot. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, they, will, uh, uh, they will possibly eventually will follow that storyline, but I can't say, uh, I can't say when. But uh, I would say that, uh, you know, there's a good chance that that may happen, so keep watching the show. And the second part would be, uh, what about spinoffs and so forth like that? Uh, they have announced that we're doing a Walking Dead uh, companion show. Uh, it's a spinoff. I don't know. I'm not scared of that word. Uh, but, I mean, it's technically not a spinoff because we're not spinning off any of the characters. That's what that term means. Uh, so uh, I can say that uh, it'll be a, uh, another group of characters surviving in another part of the world, and uh, it's not going to use any of the core cast from our show. The show will continue, you know, uninterrupted, you know, as if the other show doesn't exist, but the other show will kind of be its own entity, and uh, may or may not take place in Arizona, I'm not going to say. You never know. You never know. Uh, too many guns? Yeah. All right. Well, you're only making me more scared. <laughs> Here, Robert Kirkman came to this convention one time, and then he never came to Arizona. Again. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a question. Oh, um, um, do you have any characters that were added to the show that you wish were in the comic? Well, I mean, it certainly. I, I guess it wouldn't be a bad thing if uh, if if. Daryl Dixon showed up in the show, or in the comic, but uh, I don't know, I, I, I really like the separation, you know, I like that uh, when we sit down to write the, the show, uh, you know, one of the first things we deal with is how does Daryl Dixon change this story? Because we always start from, okay, we like this part of the comic, how are we going to do it? And uh, it's just always interesting to get in there and be like, oh, well, his existence and the fact that, you know, his personality is this and he would behave this way means that he would react to this person differently than this and differently than that. And, and uh, it's just really a great thing for the show that he doesn't exist in the comic. And, uh, you know, I really like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's, it would be cool if he's in the comic, but, uh, you know, I don't really have any plans on doing that. But I guess he would be the one that if, if I was going to pull any character you know, from the show into the comic, it'd be him. Mostly just because I love Norman. <laughs> Handsome dude. <laughs> um, if this would have got picked up, the show would have got picked up by HBO, how would it have been different? I know they said that it was probably... Would have never come out. <laughs> really? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a question I really can't answer because, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly couldn't say that it would be a gorier show, you know, because AMC lets us get away with uh, with quite a bit of stuff. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I, I, I honestly just can't say. Next. Run. <laughs> Um, quick question about the show for season one, as you were saying that uh, MC lets you get away with a lot of stuff. What was the whole meaning of looking at Lori's locket with Rick's ring on there? Because uh, to me it kind of seemed a little bit irrelevant and kind of messed up at the same time. During the whole wood scene with Shane. <laughs> oh, when they're, uh, oh, the wood scene. The wood scene. I think it was yeah. meant to be like, Hey, look at this wedding ring. This woman is totally married. And it's not the dude that she's in the woods with right now. <laughs> like, uh, I saw that and I was like, in the back of my mind, like, why? Well, what are you, are you mad because they cut away from the, the whole no, thing? No, no. <laughs> I don't want to look at a ring and a locket. No. <laughs> wow, okay. No, like... Was it was it necessary okay, to have that? Like, was it necessary to have it though, or was it just like? I think it was absolutely necessary, because otherwise you don't know that they have a ring and a locket. 
we really didn't want the audience to be watching the show going, uh, do they have a locket? Is there a ring there? I, don't know. I would have a better answer for you if I remembered the specifics. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think it cuts away to the locket. I, I, I mean, it, it was just a like, oh, there's a wedding ring here kind of thing. Set up the whole love triangle. People love. I wasn't expecting it, but um, so uh, I was wondering if the show, because in the comic books, it gets a little bit more on the dark side of humanity. I was wondering if we're going to possibly be able to see that more in the show. And then also, um, crap, I forgot the second part of the question. But <laughs> well, while you're thinking about that, I'll just say that uh, uh, season four and a half, like, I don't know, the, the rest of season four uh, starts uh, February 9th and, uh, you know, it gets pretty dark. So, uh, uh, I guess the answer is yes, but, uh, you know, just how far we go and, and what we do and stuff, uh, you'll just have to watch. But uh, I will say that uh, the show will continue to get, you know, a little bit bleak at times and a little bit darker as the world progresses and as things get a little bit more dire uh, as they have in the comic. So, uh, I wouldn't, you know, don't, don't, you know, we're not going to be pulling any punches and there's a lot of stuff coming up that, uh, that AMC is very worried about. Which, uh, <laughs> Which, I, I, I'm, I, which makes me happy. <laughs> and then also, um, are we going to be able to see a little bit more like subtlety in the show itself? I don't know, it's going to be very blatant. I don't know what, 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 what kind of subtlety you're looking for. Well, like the whole locket thing. Like, I mean, I felt like there was a little bit more to that than just... What is up with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> you're not vindicating! Put your hands down! <laughs> Sorry, I'm not attacking. I, know, I wasn't saying that. I was just like... It, subtlety in general, like, you know, just making things refer to, like, outside forces and stuff If you like can that. put your uh, complaint in writing, uh, <laughs> I'll make sure that it gets to the appropriate people. I've already sent an email. Next question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, two real quick questions. Uh, one, did you have any say in the casting for the show? And two, did you have any input on the Mythbusters Walking Dead special? Uh, no input on the Mythbusters thing. Uh, so if it was good, sorry, Mary, you know, not, not my thing. If it was awful, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, but uh, uh, I did meet, uh, is it, yeah, it's uh, Adam Savage. I met him like a, a, at a thing and he was very nice. But uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the story. I guess I was just name dropping. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, the other thing, the casting. Uh, I am very involved in casting. Uh, you know, the executive producers and I all, you know, get together and watch the actors do their thing and stuff. And I have to say, like, it is probably the most awkward thing I've ever done in my life because you literally in like a little conference room and then these actors come in one by one and they, you know, like do scenes in front of you. And, and it's literally like eight people and they're all great. And then you have to pick one. And it's just terrible because you're like, oh, I don't know, I like that guy's ears. I like that, that, that guy's voice was good. And it's like all this stuff that people can't control. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know how actors do it. It uh, 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 seems like a very uh, uh, disheartening process. Because, uh, you know, you could literally, uh, you could be like the best actor in the world and then you go in for a part. But it's like, no, 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 that person looks like that other person's brother. And we can't do that. And it's like, well, that's... Like, that has nothing to do with that person's talent. Like, it's just a thing that happens. And uh, I don't know, I, I have a lot of trouble with it because I, I constantly am like sitting there going, can't we just hire them all? Like, they're all great people. But uh, but that's not how it works. So, uh, so yeah. And then I have my picks every now and then I hate somebody. I'm like, ah, that guy's terrible. Let's make sure we don't get them. But uh, but no, I mean, it's a process that all the executive producers uh, partake in. So if you're an actor out there, don't talk to me. I have nothing to do with it. What's up? I have two questions. Can zombies starve? Can they starve to death? No. 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 And I've always felt like the eating thing is a compulsion, so it's not really a thing that's necessary to their existence. And two? They're Can constantly in that chair? Huh? Can I sit in that chair? That would be disruptive to the whole panel situation. I don't How about after? Anything. How about after? What? How about after? Are you gonna still be there? <laughs> um, I feel like you want to stab me. Is that is that like is that like a thing? Or are you, I, I have to. I don't have a gun. Or a knife. <laughs> you 
Chicken Crispy. <laughs> I've never been more uncomfortable than I am. <laughs> I guess I'll take that as a no. <laughs> See me after class. <laughs> Just don't stab me. <laughs> uh, all right, who's next? Hi. Hello? Hello? Would you like to sit up here? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to know why in the show would the governor kill her show and not Michonne when he like, totally hates Michonne? <laughs> I think that uh, he, his hatred for Michonne was, uh, oh, well, there, yeah, there, if you haven't caught up to the show, I do apologize. He did kill Michonne next, so uh, I was somewhere in the convention hall, Denai Guerrero's like, what, what, what did he say? Uh, but anyway, um, so close your ears, because you've already been spoiled. Um, no, I, uh, uh, I think that in that in that moment, the governor saw a, a, a huge connection between Herschel and Rick, and that's what he was trying to uh, play, um, and that's what he was trying to disrupt as part of his mission. And so it wasn't about his hatred of Michonne; it was about this bond that he knew that Herschel and Rick had, and, and uh, you know, taking that away. He's not a good guy. <laughs> Will Morgan uh, come back and play a role in the second half of season four? Uh, if he if he was, I couldn't say. So I would probably give some kind of a cagey answer. Uh, but uh, uh, it's entirely possible that we haven't seen the last of Morgan. But uh, it's always the possibility that we have. <laughs> so you'll just have to you'll just have to tune in. We all love Lenny James, though. So. Uh, you know, anytime we can get that guy back, we have to try to do that. Did you enjoy Little Winter Sun? He was good in that. I enjoyed Jericho. All right. <laughs> did you watch Little Winter Sun and not enjoy it, or did you just not watch it? I just didn't watch it. Part of the problem. <laughs> All right. Who's next? <clears throat> oh. So, um... You're in comics and also into comics, so I'm wondering what comics you read. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I read mostly image comics, I'll be honest. Uh, I read Manhattan Project, I read Saga, uh, really enjoying Sex Criminals, um, I love Fatal, uh, really enjoying Velvet. Um, there's a lot of books I'm forgetting. I could go through a list. I read a lot of comics. Uh, at the other companies, uh, Hawkeye is a, a marvelous comic. Uh, I don't, yeah, marvelous comic, like a pun. Anyway, um, didn't do that on purpose, I swear. I don't read the like heavy continuity books, so like if it's part of the like overall tapestry of the universe and you have to read like this thing in Thor to understand this thing in Captain America, I don't read that crap. So uh, uh, I just don't have time for it. But the stuff that's really self-contained, I, I, I do greatly enjoy. I still like uh, Snyder and Capullo's uh, Batman, it's a good book. Uh, every now and then my eyes kind of glaze over when it's like, hey, this thing happened in Catwoman, that's kind of important. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to read that. Uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff out there. I highly recommend any book that has an image eye on it. I think they're doing some, uh, some really good books, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a partner in the company. But, uh, you know, they are good. i got to get this mic moved around faster. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if it's at all frustrating for you that the show is so different from the original content, or if you like that it's kind of taken in a different direction. Uh, I mean, if you don't like the fact that the show is different from the comic, I am a huge part of the problem. Just because uh, I sit in the writer's room, you know, sometimes eight hours a day with the writers. You know, I'm like a full-time writer on the show, and I've done the comic, and so... Um, what excites me is doing new things and different things, and so I'm always like, hey, let's have this guy do this instead, and let's have this thing happen, and let's do this, and um, I just, it's more fun for me, and I, and I feel like the thing that makes The Walking Dead The Walking Dead is that when you sit down to read an issue, you don't know what's gonna happen next. 
And if the people reading the comic were watching the show going, okay, in four seconds, Tyrese is going to do this, I feel like it wouldn't be an enjoyable experience for the people that read the comics. And those are the people I care about the most. So I want you guys to have, you know, uh, as much enjoyment in the show as you do in the comics. And I know that there is this, uh, you know, this, this fan uh, desire to, you know, see those moments that you love brought to life. And sometimes you'll get that, and sometimes you'll get something different. And uh, I think it's worth being surprised from time to time to, uh, to you know, miss some of those big moments. Uh, you know, we don't get to see Lori and the baby get shot in half in the prison massacre, but you do get that really heartbreaking scene of, you know, Carl having to deal with that pregnancy and, you know, watching his mom die. And I think that's a huge emotional, you know, terrifying thing. And, you know, the actors, uh, you know, brought that together, you know, wonderfully. And, and um, I would hate to, you know, not have scenes like that, that I think are so monumental to the show and, and really, you know, character defining and, and very cool and entertaining, and, you know, just because we wanted to save it for this later thing that, you know, is going to happen. So that's the way I look at it. Where do you pull your different in your inspiration for different characters from? Uh, I mean, a lot of it comes from, uh, uh, you know, like people like me or people I know, like little little personality ticks or something like that that I find interesting that I see in other people. But the majority of it is just, you know, I don't know, just make it up. I don't know, it's a terrible answer. But, uh, you talked briefly earlier in one of your answers to your involvement in the video games by Telltale. And those are released in episodes, and they're on series, or we're on season two right now. I'm just wondering, how involved are you in the story that's being told in those games? Is that your storyline, or are you just kind of consulting? No, no, no. They uh, they come up with a storyline. Telltale, like their strength is storytelling, and uh, so that's all stuff that's generated by them. And then they basically have meetings with me, and they're like. Does this work? Does that work? You okay with this? You okay with that? We're going to be doing this. Is this good? And then I just, you know, give them notes and, and stuff like that. So I'm overseeing things to a certain extent. But, you know, if you're loving those games, uh, Telltale deserves uh, uh, at least 4% of the credit. <laughs> <laughs> you're cheating. You're going to the person right next to the other person? Huh. Disappointed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, to a certain extent Shane, you know, because he had existed in the show so long, well, you could kind of see him becoming a governor, so, uh, so I don't know, I mean, it, it would have been neat to see him uh, possibly side with the governor, but I, th I think the, uh, the reality of it is, is that if Shane had been around when they, uh, you know, came against the governor, he probably would have uh, fought for them to be a little bit more aggressive than Rick ended up being, and possibly would have gotten everybody killed. I mean, that was the whole thing about him, that he was, you know, very reckless and didn't think things through, and was certainly not the thing that the group needed. Uh, hi, I just wanted to check, uh, based on the show and the comic, is there any ideas, I know from frustration you're talking about, was there any concepts that may, you wish that could get flushed out more, or was there any ideas that you just went and said, no, this isn't gonna work? I mean, there's, I mean, there's tons of ideas. I mean, the whole, the thing that I love about the writer's room is that it's eight people sitting around a table and you're encouraged to throw out like whatever comes into your, into your head within reason. Uh, and the whole idea is that I may say a dumb thing that, you know, was an idea that maybe I don't even feel that strongly about, but because of the process and because of the eight people working in the room, uh, while they're shooting that down, it's gonna spark the imagination of somebody else in the room and that may lead to a good idea. So there's an infinite number of ideas that get pitched and shot down and, you know, we all make fun of each other and it's, uh, it's, it's a fun environment and, uh, you know, I, I quite enjoy it every now and then I get upset. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of things that, that were thrown out that, you know, we didn't like or didn't end up doing and there are things that made it all the way to like the pitch to AMC or maybe even the first draft of the script that we ended up just changing our minds on. But uh, there hasn't really been anything where I've been going, oh, I, I, I hate that, dang it, you know, uh, because, you know, I'm part of the process and I'm able to like steer things in the room. Um, 
And then as far as the comic goes, uh, I, 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 don't, I, I have this book that will come out someday called The Cutting Room Floor, and it is a book collecting all of my plots for the series. And there's quite a bit of things that, uh, that you'll see that, you know, that changed. I was going to go in one direction, and I'm going in another. Some characters are going to die earlier, some characters are going to die later. Um, they're going to die differently, and uh, it'll be fun to kind of explore, uh, you know, what could have been if I ever put that book out. So, uh, when this panel wraps up, I'm going to go get back to work on that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, with all the fighting and stuff, you don't put a lot of sex. There's only been like a few scenes, so I'm wondering if, uh, how did the characters, with all the fighting, which to me, they fight, and so their sexual tension must be pretty high. So I'm just wondering why there isn't either more masturbation or. Um, I mean, is that an AMC thing? Or. Oh. Uh. Sure, sure. Actually, like a like a rollover rule where you can only like be on top of someone for like a few seconds and then you have to move positions and it's very strange. I don't know. I don't know why it's like families at home are like they better move. They better move. This is getting really racy. And they go. They adjusted position. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's that's a lot more. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean it'll happen from time to time. I think it's it's uh, oftentimes I think in the show it's very hard to say, oh, there's going to be a racy scene here because someone just got murdered or they just got attacked. Or there's like a lot of like heavy stuff that goes on and there have been possibly more quieter moments in the comic that have allowed that to happen. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some, you know, there's, there'll be the odd scene from time to time, but it's definitely not, uh, I wouldn't say The Walking Dead is a sexy show by, uh, by any means. So, uh, so you're right on that front. You got another question? Yeah, can we shift gears to Invincible after that question? Oh, I, I do other things, yes. Okay. Uh, I just had a question about when you first conceptualized... Way more sex in Invincible. <laughs> I was going to say, people are having babies, people are pregnant. Um, when you first conceptualized the book, did you want it to be as subversive as I think it is? It's, it really kind of holds a mirror up to all these other books that have come before it, and you kind of create this hero character in the first six issues and then he kills everyone. Yeah. I mean Spoiler we're over a hundred issues now. How you know how did yeah, that I mean, that uh, initial first of all I just want to point out that as soon as you were like invincible question, like eight people just you guys are I'm out of here. It's the best <laughs> Superhero book in the world. <laughs> no, come on. I love it. But, uh, uh, but no, I mean, I think the the real strength of independent comics, of you know, image comics, uh, you know, almost exclusively, but all creator-owned books and things that aren't like controlled by corporations, is that uh, you can do that thing that you know Invincible did, where it seems like one kind of book for a few issues, and then. I just love that idea of like you're on issue six and you're like, whoa, wait, whoa, like what happened in my comic? Like I don't understand how they could do this. And I love being able to turn on a dime and you know make it you know weirder or more mature or you know suddenly violent and suddenly like very like happy go lucky and like a comedy book. And I love that uh, that juxtaposition. It's 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 almost something that's completely unique to comics. And I think that uh, you know that was always really the goal with Invincible. Um, it's always been. Uh, you know, everything I've ever loved about superhero comics put in one book. And if you look at the, you know, history of superhero comics, uh, you know, there's stories like Dark Knight, there's stories like, you know, 
you know, kid stuff. There's just a whole range of really cool things that have been done in the context of superhero comics. And being able to do all that weird stuff in one book, I think, is uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm going to stop talking about Invincible now, please. No one else will leave. <laughs> all right. Uh, I mean, the Romero movies, I have to give credit to. I mean, that's, you know, the, the where it all started, you know, the whole zombie genre. Uh, so so definitely, uh, you know, a lot of inspiration was taken from that. Uh, uh, you know, Lucio Fulci did a lot of really good uh, Italian zombie movies. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'm taking inspiration from, you know, other places. I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, I Am Legend, the Richard Matheson no novel, is definitely a, a you know, a big, uh, big thing that I think all zombie movies uh, kind of owe uh, debt to that book. So yeah. And do you let your seven-year-old son watch your show? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't. You know, if you're seven and you enjoy the show, that's great. Uh, uh, it just depends on if you can handle it or not. Uh, my son is uh, very, uh, uh, like, he's like really against anything that has any kind of violence. He just doesn't want to see it. So, uh, so you know, I'll toughen him up at some point. But, uh, but for now, he, uh, I'll threaten him sometimes. I'll be in my computer and I'll be like approving a trailer or something, and I'll be like, "Hey, you want to watch this one?" He thing? And he's like, "Whoa, no, no, I'm out of here!" And he's like, yeah. uh, "So, uh, so yeah." And then I'll go, "Dad, I hate The Walking Dead. I've never seen it." But he doesn't like zombies. How did you like the bad lip reading of The Walking Dead? Probably my favorite thing in the world. Uh, that one thing about like fish know what you're thinking when you're dreaming or something. Like I almost fell out of my chair. And then I got to tell you, uh, David Morrissey uh, at Comic Con was doing the the thing at the end with the, uh, and that's how they do it on Broadway. Like he did that at the panel. I'm so proud of him. Because uh, uh, sometimes actors don't want to have like fun or poke fun at their roles or anything like that. And, uh, I thought that was really awesome that he was like aware of it and was into it stuff. But I don't know, I thought it was hilarious. It was like the best thing in the world. Just a heads up guys, we're coming down to the last few questions. Robert, you want to Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get this guy real quick and then, then go deep. I don't look at the periphery. <laughs> My question is, you uh, keep mentioning the image. Uh, what brought you to be connected to that franchise? To image? Uh, I mean, Image, uh, Image is a company, it's the only company in the entire entertainment business, like, including comics and everything else, that allows the creator of the, of the idea to own and control the idea completely. And, uh, you know, Image was a company that was founded by, uh, you know, six, you know, seven artists from Marvel Comics that created a company that was designed for creators by creators, so it's a company that's not... There's not a guy that owns Image Comics that is maximizing profits and trying to uh, make stockholders happy or trying to buy his next yacht. Uh, the entire company is designed only to allow the creators to, you know, benefit from their creations as opposed to a company. And it's, it's the only thing like that that exists in the world in the history of anything. So uh, it's it's kind of a remarkable thing. So I was, you know, very uh, very keen to get in on that very early in my career. Just go way back and yeah, find some people. Oh no no, no I'm not, not not that kid. <laughs> I'm kidding. Why He's a good sport. Why did none of the characters go to the restroom? Uh, because no one wants to see that. I, I, I would like to see that. I know someone else that would like to see it. Uh, but, uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just not a thing. If you read Invincible. The, the the you know in the in the first four pages that guy's on the toilet I like that stuff but uh, uh, he hasn't been on the toilet since you know, 108 issues uh, nobody shows that my favorite is uh, 24 because that shows in real time so it's Kiefer Sutherland running around for 24 episodes that all take place over the course of an hour and you know it's 24 hours of his life you never see that guy use the bathroom <laughs> weird. There should be like an episode where a half an hour of that episode, he's gone. <laughs> so he comes out of the magazine, oh man, did they fire the missile yet? <laughs> Let's get back to work. Uh, who do you think got Lauren pregnant? Can I get that question from 
someone younger. <laughs> It's a matter of when, not if. Um, you know, we actually talk about that a bit in the writers' room as to when it would be appropriate to bring him in and what needs to happen in order to get to that point. And uh, you know, it, 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 unless the show gets canceled abruptly very soon, uh, you'll you'll see Negan on the TV show. Last like season, season nine. Um, Because those are very expensive to do. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it, it's it's weird because it's the kind of thing that in real life would happen. You know, like oh, there's zombies and there's a tornado and there's a tornado of zombies. Uh, they, they would do that on the Sci-Fi Channel. There's someone who's probably working on that on the Sci-Fi Channel right now. Zombie tornado. Um, Zombnado. Zombnado. I don't know. We can work this out. Zombie foo? <laughs> Zombie king? Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a it, it's a thing that would happen naturally. But I think in, in a storytelling sense, if you were watching the show and suddenly there was like an earthquake or you know something, I think it would seem kind of strange. So, uh, so I don't know. That's why we kind of avoid that stuff. But there was a huge tornado in between seasons two and three, which didn't show it to you. <laughs> They were living in a trailer park. They were like, no. <laughs> yeah, um, you were talking about the cutting room food. Yeah. Oh, we'll bring that up again. Yesterday, uh, I watched the Image Revolution uh, movie, and you were talking about when you originally pitched the book to them that there was an alien invasion element. Mm -hmm. uh, any chance of a, that we were going to see that? Absolutely no chance whatsoever. <laughs> now, the short version of that story is that Image, uh, zombie books had never been popular, they had never been successful, um, they had never been, you know, they'd never been a big hit zombie book in comics, and so uh, when I pitched The Walking Dead to Image, they said, uh, zombie books have never been successful, and this doesn't really have a hook, it's just a zombie book, like, people have done this before. Uh, so, uh, you know, you need to have some kind of a hook. And so I lied to them, and I was like, eh, there's aliens in it. <laughs> Zombies are, uh, you know, they're created by the aliens to weaken our infrastructure. And they were like, that's interesting. Approved. <laughs> and then after a couple issues came out, they were like, so when are you, when you going to start hinting at those aliens? And I was like, I lied to you guys. And they were like, well, all right, it's a good book. It's okay. <laughs> so anyone who's coming up in comics, uh, you know, trying to break in, you know, do whatever you had to do. It's a tough business. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we got one last question, so make it a terrible one, so that we all regret staying for this. Just pick somebody. I don't want to be. I don't want to be responsible for this. I'd rather you get shot than me. I don't want to... No offense. I mean, we could all say that about anyone at any time. Um, do you have any plans to resurrect Battle Pope? Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, what I like to say is uh, I started my career with Battle Pope and I will end my career with Battle Pope. So uh, once The Walking Dead is gone and forgotten and nobody likes it anymore and my career is in the toilet and I'm destitute, uh, I'll do a few issues of Battle Pope before I hang myself. So. <laughs> so when you see that Battle Pope announcement, you should be like, oh, no. <laughs> poor guy. He's still doing comics? Oh. So we'll end on that note. <laughs>
can't see where you're going. 